Hello and welcome. This is the grand finale of our numerical calculations of psychometric properties for moist air. And in this video, we're going to be using all the equations that we previously derived for psychometric properties and starting from the dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, and total pressure, we're going to get all the psychometric properties that we would typically want in HVAC calculations. So we have a lot to cover in this video, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to do this in SI, and the procedure is very similar in English. There are a few equations in this set of steps that are specific to SI, and so before you go ahead and do these, you may need to check that all of your equations are correct, that they're not having these hidden units and such. But SI will be a great example, and I... Of course, I encourage everyone to use SI as scientists and engineers. So the first thing we're going to do is get our temperatures in, they're in Celsius right now, but we're also going to need them in the absolute temperature scale. So that's something we can do right away. And if we want to go from degrees C to Kelvin, what we have to do is add 273.15. So that means that our dry bulb temperature is also equal to 303.15 Kelvin and our wet bulb temperature is equal to 293.15 Kelvin. So the first order of business is to calculate the saturation pressure but doing that at the wet bulb temperature and we are in the range from 0 degrees C to 200 degrees C and so we have this very long equation with some polynomial terms and a natural log term and I'm going to write that out quickly for you so that we can see all the numbers in places. So there you have the equation just appeared for you and all these C terms C8, C9, C10, and C11, C12, C13 they're all constants that are defined and we showed those in a previous video I'll put them down here in a second and just realize that we have a, a temperature term here. Remember, this is the wet bulb temperature in Kelvin. These are all in Kelvin, okay, absolute temperature. And this is divided by T, nothing, I guess, T to the zero, which is one, T, T squared, T cubed, and then the natural log of T all times these constants. And that's the natural log of the saturation pressure at that given temperature. So let me go ahead and write down those constants for you if you don't remember. So let me scroll down for that. Okay, so here are our constants, and if I would do this calculation on this right-hand side, the right-hand side of the equation, we'll come out to something close to 7.5, sorry, 7.757, and notice that this is the natural log on this side, so to get P saturation, we actually have to take E, E, Euler's number to both sides, so we take E to the 7.757, and if you do that calculation, you get 2,338.8, and the units on this are Pascal. So typically we want to keep things consistent. We were dealing with kilopascal before in our total pressure, so to get kilopascal, we have to divide this number by 1,000, and we have 2.338. 8 kilopascal. That is our saturation pressure of H2O at the wet bulb temperature. And something to note right away is that our total pressure was 101 kilopascal and the saturation pressure of H2O is only 2. So there's a pretty big order of magnitude difference between those pressures. The next order of business is to calculate the humidity ratio at saturation for this condition. So if we remember what our formula for humidity ratio is with respect to pressures, we had the partial pressure of, I guess, vapor, um, but we'll, we're doing this at saturation. And 
divide that by the total pressure minus the yield saturation. So what we can do is plug these numbers in. So we have 0.622 multiplied by 2.34. I'm just going to round this. And typical, typically in an actual programming situation, you would not want to round these values. And this is, well, this is kilopascal, imagine being part of that. And we have total pressure, which is 101 kilopascal minus 2.34 kilopascal. So all the units were all in kilopascal. This is actually unitless here. And we have a unitless ratio for the absolute humidity ratio. And if you do this calculation, you get out something close to 0 0.0147. Now, we can use this information based on an equation we derived when we were talking about the wet bulb temperature. And with the definition of the wet bulb temperature is, you can think of it as a, an experiment that we had with it. We came up with this formula for omega, not the omega saturation, the actual omega that corresponds to this set of conditions. So this is our specific humidity ratio. And we had this equation. So we have this and recognize that this formula is related to SI only. There's a, another formula that has a very similar form that would be for inch pound calculations. And notice that here, this gets confusing, but all these temperatures will be in degrees C. And again, this is unitless. And this is what we had just previously calculated. So let me fill in all of these values. Okay, so I've filled in the values for our variables here, so you can see the numbers in places, so nothing is opaque to you. And if you were to do this calculation, you'd get a humidity ratio closer to 0 0.0106, again, which is less than, obviously, well, that saturation humidity ratio, because this at this, temp, at this point, when you're at 30 degrees C and 20 degrees C, we're obviously not saturated. We're saturated when these two temperatures are equivalent, the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature, and actually the dew point temperature as well. So we have now, so this is a very important parameter that we've now solved for. Next on the docket, we need to figure out the saturation pressure, but at this time, at the dry bulb temperature. So we, we did this up here for saturation pressure at the wet bulb temperature. We're going to do the exact same equation here, except for each one of these terms, we will have 303.15 because that, that is our dry bulb temperature. So this follows exactly the same way. So if you had this function working for this temperature, it will hopefully clearly work unless something is going tragically wrong for a new temperature and you can figure out a new saturation pressure. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time rewriting that very long expression, but if you do this and you do this correctly, you should get something around 4.25 kilopascal. And just for your own sake to, to know that in typical HVAC temperature ranges that this formula is accurate, um, I went and looked up the values. So if you actually go to a table, my table for this was 4.2460 kilopascal at 30 degrees C. And if I did it at 20 degrees C, what would do, what do we have? 2.3388 um, from a table, not from the formula. I had, oh, let me, I don't know if you can see that. I actually had 2.3388 exactly. And actually maybe maybe this one was actually 4.246. I just had it truncated in my Excel spreadsheet down. So do note that in typical ranges, this formula is quite good as, and within well within the range of uncertainty that you would need to have in typical HVAC calculations. And as we did before with the wet bulb temperature, we can figure out the omega at saturation at the dry bulb temperature. That's that same formula, 0.622 and the vapor at saturation at that temperature. 
over the total pressure minus that same pressure. And so if you did that, you would get something that looks, I'm going to skip the units, but this is kilopascal, again, 101 minus 4.25. And if you calculate that out, you will get something close to 0 0.0273. Now I've already hit the 10 minute mark, so I'm going to break this video in half. And in the next video, we're gonna follow through on calculating the degree of saturation, relative humidity, specific volume, enthalpy, we'll need uh, the partial pressure of the vapor, and finally, the dew point temperature. So I hope you'll join me for that. And I hope this gives you a good sample uh, calculation that you could program something in an Excel spreadsheet and some programming language that you can do uh, psychrometric property calculations yourself. And you don't need to be tied to anybody's software. You can be an independent HVAC engineer. So hope to see you in the next video.